So I'm going to talk about tabular reports here. Um, so you know, as well as annotating, you might want to create, you know, as well as annotation relative to an element, you know, a, a diameter, slopes and things relative to conduits or, or structures, for example. Sometimes you'll need to create tabular annotation. Uh, so let's have a look at um, some functionality to do that. If I want to generate tabular reports of my drainage data, then I've got some reporting options that I can use to do that. There's some pre-formatted reports here on the report ribbon, but I also have access to the flex tables functionality. Now, because I'm looking at drainage data here, I'm going to use the extra granularity that I get by using the data in the drainage database. And if I scroll down here, we can see that we have pre-formatted reports for each different element type. Now, I'm going to use the catch basin table as an example in this case. But if I want to customize the content of this table, then before I start, I'd recommend that you right click and say duplicate as hydraulic model flex table. That creates a copy of the table underneath the hydraulic model folder here. And what that basically means is it's saved in the design file. Now, if you're setting this up in a DGN library, then definitely set up your tables underneath the hydraulic model so that when each drainage and utilities project is created, they'll be automatically copied into the working design file. Having created that copy of the flex table, I can now double click to edit it. So I can now choose what data I want to display and how to format it. So for example, if I don't want the ID column, I'm going to right click on that column and say, remove column. If I don't want the width of the parabolic gutter, I can do the same thing. If I want to change the formatting of a value, I can right click units and formatting and choose the decimal precision to use and the unit as one. I'll leave it at percent that's applicable for this. Click OK and you see the update. I can also filter the content of the flex table. So for example, I'm seeing different feature definitions here. They're all catch basins, but I might, for example, only want to include the road edge channel in there. So I'll right click on the feature definition column and go to filter, custom. Now, because I right clicked on that column, it's highlighted the column for me. So I'll just double click to confirm that. And I want to say if the feature definition equals and then I can click this icon here to show me the unique values, in other words, each unique feature definition. Let's just make that column a little bit wider because uh, I want to select the uh, the training road edge channel inlet feature definition. So now that I've set that filter up, I can click OK. Let's just move this flex table across slightly. So we can see that the table has now been filtered. It's only showing 39 of the 46 catch basins. We can see that the feature definition column here only now shows the feature definition that we want. And down in the bottom right hand corner, we can see that the flex table has been filtered. Once we've got the flex table showing us the information that we want, there's a few ways that we can export the information. So for example, I could just use a window selection like that and then right click and I can copy or copy with headers and then paste that into a spreadsheet application. I can also use the export to file option and either export to a shape file, a text file or a CSV file. Now, having got this uh, flex table just how I like it, there's another option to export this information out. And from the home ribbon under export utilities, I can click export Excel. This dialog 
offers a couple of advantages. Firstly, it's going to export directly to Excel if I want to. And also, I can choose the element types that I want to export. So I'll just export catch basins in this example. And secondly, I can choose a flex table that I've already uh, created. Let's just select that correct row there to, to customize the content that gets written to the Excel file. So I'm going to pick a flex table that I've already set up here, the road channel, road edge channel inlets. And you can see from the scroll down list here, the columns that have been included. Now, generally speaking, you should click in because the flex table is filtering the catch basins that are going to be exported. You should click the uh, publish a subset option here. I'm purposely not going to click that for a moment. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to save that as an Excel file. Click OK. In this case, I'll replace that file. So the Excel files now been created. If we have a look in my uh, in Windows Explorer, there's the file there. Now, if I want to embed that table in my design file, I can do that too. So if I go to the drawing production ribbon, I can use the place table functionality. I'm going to select the Excel file that I just created. There it is. Click open. I can select a range of cells and which worksheet I want to uh, use in this case. I'll just click OK. So it takes a moment just to generate the table by reading that Excel spreadsheet. So we'll just let that process. Okay, now the uh, the processing's complete. I've actually got a table attached to my cursor. Now, note this retain association option, which we'll come back to in a moment, but I'll just data point to embed that table in my design file. So if I scroll in now, we can see the content of the table in the design file. Now you'll note here that there's two feature definitions listed. So we need to fix that. So I'm going to go back to the export Excel option. And this time I'm going to tick on the option just to publish the subset of elements based on the active flex table filters. So we'll click OK. We'll update the existing file. We'll click Save. Yes. Let that file get uh, created. And what I'll do now is I'll select the table in the design file. And because I clicked on that, re uh, that retain association option, I can use the refresh table option because we know the table that has been used to generate this information and we can refresh the table to update it so that it's got the correct information shown. And there we go, the table's been updated. As you can see that it's only listing the one feature definition now. I'll just go back to the reports ribbon and back to flex tables because there's a few more flex tables which you might not be aware of. If I right click on my tables hydraulic model and go new, there's a couple of flex tables here that I'll just show you quickly. There's a two row flex table and a node and connected pipe flex table. Now I've already run those so you can see them listed here. So let's just open my nodes and connected pipes flex table. Now, as you can see, this is listing each node. I've added the X, Y coordinates and the ground and invert elevations. And then it's showing me each connected pipe, its start and stop invert elevations, and whether that pipe is coming into the node or out of the node. So that's quite a useful report. If we scroll down here, for example, this particular node here's got 
two pipes coming in and one pipe going out, so the flex table shows me that information. If we look at the two row flex table, this is kind of the other way around. For each individual conduit, it's telling me the upstream and downstream nodes, their upstream and downstream coordinates, upstream and downstream uh, ground elevations, HGLs, inverts, that kind of information. So a couple of extra flex tables there that you might find useful. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you and see you next time.